Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel and welcome to unboxing the Arduino Zero. So in this video, of course, we're going to unbox the Arduino Zero. We're going to give you an overview of it, talk about what type of applications it's good for, talk about some of it, what makes it special, so on and so forth. Before I continue, I'll do a shameless plug real quick. Forcetronics LLC is offering contracting as well as consulting services related to open source hardware projects. So at the end of this video, I have a, a video about it up on YouTube, but at the end of this video, I, I give you contact information. Okay, let's get started. So why would you want to use the Arduino Zero? The main headline for me for the Arduino Zero was it delivers a lot of features and performance for very low power. So it's great for Internet of Things type applications where you need some processing power, you need some of these features, and you're concerned about battery life. Here's some of the features and specs of it. Uh, it's based on the SAM D21 chip from Atmel. This is an ARM core, so this is not like uh, a lot of the other Arduino chips that are AVR based. This is ARM based like the Duo. It only works at a 3.3 voltage level. It'll have a 5 volt power supply on the board, but it only does 3.3 volt logic, so keep that in mind. I mentioned that you know more processing power then the Uno, because we got 32 bits, uh, we're running at 48 megahertz. We're going to have more memory, of course, and, and things like that. And you're going to get the six ADC channels that you see in the Uno, except they're 12-bit instead of 10-bit, so you get more resolution there. Of course, if you look in the data sheet because of you know non-ideal things, you really get an ENOB or an effective number of bits of about 10.5, but still great resolution. One nice thing this has is a DAC output. So actually A0 can serve as a DAC output. And what that means is a digital to analog converter. So you can basically control, put an output, a specific voltage level from zero to 3.3 volts. Arduino has an example sketch where you can use this to drive a speaker to play music. You could also use this to create waveforms. Uh, you could use it to drive a FET, to use it as a variable resistor, for instance. And that delivers 10-bit resolution. I mentioned the great performance versus power consumption. I'm going to talk a little bit more about power consumption later. It has a built-in debugger. I'll talk about that later, what that means. Some of the other features, 32-bit real-time counter, peripheral touch controller. So it has built-in features for using touch devices uh, or sensors or, or interface controls, I should say. It has a special communication interface for sound or music. Those are a couple of the features. If, if you go in, there's a lot that this board can deliver. I'm just picking out a few. Now, I will mention for some of the last ones I just mentioned, the last three, there's not really Arduino library items to take advantage of some of these advanced features. Maybe that'll come in the future. So at the time of this video, that doesn't exist. So you know, if you want to use these features, you'll have to go dig into the data sheet or look at some of the Atmel user material to really use those advanced features, because right now I, there's not libraries out for them. Okay, let's take a look of the unboxing of, of the board. Okay, so here we have the Arduino Zero fresh out of the box. Uh, let me get in a little closer. Some things you can see right away is here we have the debugger chip. This is the programmer debugger, so you don't need an external board to do programming or essentially debugging if you wanted to do debugging. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about more about that later. Uh, so that's nice. And then there is the actual zero chip, the SAM chip, the ARM chip. Let me turn it around actually so it's face up. So you can see the footprint is just like the Uno, and I've actually brought in the Uno just to kind of compare, but the, the size and the footprint is the same as the Uno. Uh, but one thing you can say is it has two, two USB ports. And so this is actually similar to the Duo, and I kind of brought this in as a, a comparison. And I need that to come into focus. So just like the Duo, the programming ports, you have one USB native port and one programming port. And for debugging, you have to use the programming port, but you could actually program with either USB port. And I'll talk about the debugging a little bit later. What else is worth calling out? Well, similar to the, the Duo board, your SPI is going to be located on, on this 6-pin uh, header here instead of using 
pin 13, 12, and 11 like you would on the Uno. What was the last thing that I wanted to mention? Oh, yeah, the ATN pin. So in the past, the, the pin right above the IO ref pin, the ATN pin, has basically not been labeled or not been used. Here, although at the time of this video, it's still, they don't, still don't have much documentation on it, they claim that this extra pin can be used as a chip select pin when you're using SPY. That way, you don't have to eat up one of your digital pins. I believe it can also just be used as a digital pin. But anyway, that's sort of an extra pin now that you're starting to see on this type of footprint board. So uh, there's the zero. Okay, so we just saw the unboxing. One thing I have to mention, and to me this is stupid. I, I don't know how you do this, but there's some confusion out there because there's an Arduino Zero board, which I'm talking about here, and there's a Zero Pro board. They're both, both very similar. There's differences in the firmware or the bootloader and slight hardware differences, but for the most part, they're using the same chip and they both have a debugger. Why is there two versions? Well, in case you're not aware, Arduino, this open source community that's, you know, everybody gets along, well, they didn't get along. So the, the company basically split up. So there's two versions of the Arduino company out there. If you weren't aware of this, I'll give you a second to mourn. Okay, so the two versions are, I'll call them Arduino.cc because that's their website. And that's the one making the Arduino Zero, which I'm talking about. And then there's Arduino.org. And they're the one that makes the Arduino Zero Pro. They're changing the name of the Arduino Zero Pro to the M Zero Pro. So maybe by the time you watch this, it'll be labeled as the M Zero Pro. But I, I don't know how this, this happens. Such similar names for very similar boards. And, and the reason this is a problem is because if you try to use the Zero Pro, with the IDE from Arduino.cc, it won't work and you'll be confused of what's going on. You know, as of the making of this video, the IDE uh, 1.6.5 is what you can use for the Ar program into your Arduino Zero. And you'll have to go to Arduino.org to get their IDE 1.7.6 at the time of this video for doing the Zero Pro. Anyway, need to point that out. Okay, let me talk about the power consumption, and because I mentioned to me this is one of the headlines, is a lot of performance, a lot of features at low power. So here's actually something I stole off the Arduino website, and they're sort of comparing the, uh, when I say stole off the website, I mean the, the image. Here they're showing the Zero's power consumption versus the Uno's power consumption. Both chips are running the same sketch, same code. And you can see that the Zero is half or actually less than half the power draw of the Uno. And by the way, you know that this image did not come from me because I would never use such a crappy power supply with questionable measurements. I don't know how accurate those measurements are you're seeing. Anyway, I digress. So some things to note. The headline here is the Zero does use less power than the Uno. One thing to consider though is they are measuring this, I'm guessing, from the input power and so the zero employs a DC to DC converter to take input voltage, let's say five volts from USB or seven or eight or nine volts from the, the power jack and to convert it to 3.3 volts. So it uses a DC to DC converter. The Uno uses a voltage regulator. A voltage regulator is a little more power hungry. The good thing about a voltage regulator is, well, it's, it's cheap and it's low complexity to set up, but it also gives you a very stable output. But like I said, it, it burns power off. A DC to DC converter is based on switching topology, so it's actually very power efficient, a little more complex to set up, but a DC to DC converter is a little noisy, so I, I'm hoping they did good filtering on the board, and I'm hoping that's not gonna get to my ADC pins and and or my ADC reference and, and affect the accuracy of my measurements. My whole point about that rant was some of that power consumption is probably coming the, for the fact that there's a DC-DC converter on the, the Zero and a regulator on the Uno. The Zero has a lot of built-in power management capabilities. So depending how you're using it, they have some type of management way to, to reduce its power based on things you're not using or based on the speed you need to use it at, uh, so on and so forth. One last thing to note is because it is a lower power chip, 
Uh, they're only giving you 7 milliamps at the digital pin. So a digital pin on the zero can only output 7 milliamps, whereas the Uno can do 20 milliamps. Okay, I mentioned I was going to talk about the debugger. Debugging is something that doesn't exist today in the Arduino IDE. And to do debugging, you could use something like Atmel Studio, and that's what I'm showing you now. But even with Atmel Studio, you typically would have to buy a debugging board. But with the chip that's on the zero board, not only can you do programming, and when I say do programming, I mean you can actually burn the bootloader onto it if for some reason you took it off. So you, it's a true programmer, but it also does debugging. So you don't need any external hardware for debugging. What you do need, you know, and I'll say this again at the time of this video, because maybe they'll add this to the Arduino IDE, is you do need to use the Atmel Studio software, not the Arduino IDE, if you wanted to take advantage of the, of the debugging. Another thing you're going to need is the extension, the, uh, the virtual micro extension. And this is, I'm guessing, open source software that was made by some nice people that basically allows you to import or create Arduino IDE sketches right in the Atmel Studio. So you can write your Arduino code in here and then use the debugger. And I never mentioned this, but in case you don't know what a debugger is, it basically allows you to track what's happening in your code, the values of the variables, so on and so forth, so you can spot problems right away. Whereas without a debugger, what you probably do today is you turn on an LED when something happens if you're trying to debug your code, or you look at what's printing out the serial monitor to make sure everything's going right. A debugger makes that process much easier. Okay, that's it for unboxing the Arduino Zero. Once again, I didn't cover everything that's new in the Arduino or Zero or all the features, but I, I think I gave a pretty good overview. Uh, if you have anything to add, please leave it in the comments section. And if you're interested in the Forstronics contracting or consulting services, here's how you can contact me. Thank you for watching.